All righty, we are live. Give people a second to tune in here. Kyle, you should get in touch with Lonnie Leitner. He lives in St. Paul and he, he works for me. I will. We're, we're live right now, but I'll, I'll happily you know, talk about that later. I will. All right. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another live stream uh, produced by the First Tuesday Conservatives presented by Alpha News. I'm your host, Kyle Hooten. This afternoon, we have a very special guest with us, Mr. David Horowitz, a conservative author and the founder of the David Horowitz Freedom Center. Sir, thank you so much for being with us. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So wide range of topics to discuss today. I want to get into the 2020 election, President Donald Trump, and uh, how to combat the left. But first, I want to talk about a book you recently authored, Blitz, uh, How Trump Will Crush the Left and Win. Tell us a little bit about the thesis you lay out in that recent work. Actually, it's an assertion. Trump will smash the left and win. Absolutely. I didn't calculate on uh, the massive voter fraud that the Democrats are engaged in. Um, and I think the future of our country clearly hangs in the balance. Uh, my book Blitz is about the first three and a half years of the Trump administration and the war against him. And it's really about the nature of the Democrat party, which is a treasonous party, mm -hmm. a criminal party. Um, documents, others have written books on the, uh, the coup attempt. They actually, it's the first attempt in American history to overthrow a duly elected government. Um, well, it's the second one. Um, the first one was when Lincoln was elected, but, it, but the Confederacy for all their other faults at least had the good graces to say what they were about and to you know, start a war. Yeah. The Democrats are doing this by stealth. I mean, it's the most sinister um, corruption of our political process imaginable. Mm -hmm. um, that's why I say it's a criminal party. It's also behind, completely endorsed the criminals of Black Lives Matter, mm -hmm. who are tearing up our cities, beginning with uh, Minneapolis. It's odd. I mean, all these cities are Democrat run. Um, so every injustice alleged or real that's done to black people in these cities is done by Democrats. They have a monopoly and they've had it for 50 to 100 years. Uh, and Republicans are too polite to mention things like this. Although one thing that my book Blitz um, highlights is that when Trump started, he, he gave a speech, uh, actually it was in the Detroit area, um, addressing the inner cities and saying, what do you have to lose by voting for me? The Democrats don't care about you. They only care about your votes. You have off the charts crime rates. You have rotten schools. You have no jobs. This was a direct threat at the Democrat party and it's why they have to destroy Trump. Absolutely. I, wish, I wish more Republicans would say things like this all the time because yeah. We, we absolutely do have a problem with our leaders not being bold enough, which is something that Trump has, you know, done very well with. Trump's been a very bold leader. Uh, do you think yeah, that it's like they don't want to embarrass people who want to kill them? <laughs> You're right. You're absolutely right. The left is crying for blood and burning down buildings, and Republicans oh, lying every time right. they move their lips. I yeah. can't believe. Let's see, uh, Biden's accused Trump of uh, killing every coronavirus patient. Uh, of, of being behind the riots, which are so clearly left-wing riots endorsed by the Democrat party and enabled by the Democrat party. Mm -hmm. So it's very unequal battle. It's, it's like um, Republicans are bringing a knife to a gunfight. Absolutely. But I don't think it's a knife. It's more like a fly swatter. Unfortunately, but despite this, you seem pretty confident that Trump is gonna win. Uh, what do you think well, Trump I did. is gonna win? I don't now because of the oh. massive fraud. We ran an article actually on my website at frontpagemag.com by one of your prime citizens, Bruce Henry, about how Minnesota has legalized voter fraud. Effectively, uh, yeah. And that's because the Democrats have, con have controlled Minnesota since what, 1972 or something. Mm -hmm. this, what's the matter with you people? 
I don't know. It's those major urban centers. Your average Minnesotan, you know, they wear flannels and they go to the cabin on the weekend, but it's these people in the cities that are so incestuously left wing. Universities, our schools have been, I wrote five books on how the schools are taken over by what I would call communists um, that just have shut down. There's no diversity of uh, views in the university. It's all uh, along the spectrum of the left, no challenges. And so they, they um, operate fact free, just the way Joe Biden does. I mean, here's a guy who presided eight years out of selling our economy or giving it to the Chinese. Um, and he's running on America first. <laughs> Bro, I'm bring back our manufacturing. Sure, Joe. <laughs> yeah, I don't buy it any more than you do. So you identify this problem. Oh, such a brazen lie, and there's no media to quell them out. No. Even, you know, even Fox is, is, is ridiculous. Fox could, has so many Democrat operatives who um, carry water for these criminals. Why do you think, why do you think conservative media has failed to call these people out sometimes? Because I've seen that you've been very critical of Fox. Because conservatives are, are well-bred mm -hmm. and uh, they still think that we live in a country where there's a, a democratic with a small d opposition. Mm -hmm. The opposition to the Republicans is a criminal opposition. As I say, it's attempted the first coup d'etat in American, oh, since the Civil War, uh, which was more honest because it was a civil war, open civil war rather than an internal uh, subversion. Um, you know, and, and uh, they will say and do anything to get elected. There's no lie too big that they won't tell it. Mm -hmm. Trump doesn't control the health care system in a single state, not one. Mm -hmm. We're all controlled by the governors. We have a federal system. All the COVID patients that were sent to nursing homes were sent by Democrats. The Republicans are why aren't they saying this or screaming it for that matter? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I was raised by communists, so I, I have no way of understanding this mentality. I just know that it's there. Stop being so polite. So the solution is to become more brazen, to become more like president. The Democratic Party is a racist party. Mm -hmm. It controls every major inner city in America of any size, every killing field, Detroit, Chicago, Baltimore, St. Louis, 100% controlled by the Democratic Party and has been uh, Minneapolis for 50, Milwaukee for 50 to 100 years. Every injustice real or imagined that's done to Black people mm -hmm. is done by Democrats, 100%. And you never hear a Republican call them racist. So there was one who did, which is Trump. Yeah, yeah. That's and even the Republican establishment is hostile to Trump when he calls these people out. They want to maintain their sort of civil status yeah. quo. Uh, do, do you think that there's any real hope for future conservative leaders like Trump after we've seen the Republican establishment reject him as they have? Well, we're undergoing a national transformation. This country is not what it was. Uh, a year or two ago, mm -hmm. it's completely changed. And uh, I mean, I, I fear for the future. If the Democrats win, there will be civil war. Hmm. Hmm. And it, it, you can't have actually a civil war like 1860 because the federal government is too powerful. So you're saying if, if the Democrats win, we're on the war path. I've heard a lot of people say that if Trump wins, the Democrats will stage some sort of violent civil war. But you're saying- I'll put him in jail. You see what Ron DeSantis is jail. Mm -hmm. Why are these people allowed to occupy streets and bridges mm -hmm. without a parade permit? I mean, that, 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 there's an insurrection going on and nobody has the cojones to put it down. But Trump will. And, uh, you know, Ron DeSantis will, and there are other governors who will. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's coming. Absolutely. So in the you event know, that- The President Insurrection Act has to be invoked. This is an insurrection. This is total lawlessness. And you, you people in Minnesota have suffered as much as anyone. Minneapolis destroyed, New York destroyed. Mm -hmm. and they'll never recover. No.
No. In the event that President Trump is able to overcome the fraud that's most likely going to occur in November, are you confident that he'll be able to invoke the Insurrection Act and then have people actually follow? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I, absolutely. It's all, it's, you know, it, it's all in motion. I mean, taking, a, you know, one of the worst things um, in the debate, you had that snake, Chris Wallace, nope. ask Trump why he's opposed to racial sensitivity training, meaning critical race theory. Mm -hmm. Critical race theory is a racist theory to demonize white people and America. And, and it's by anti-American Marxists developed it. It's mm -hmm. a completely phony theory. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and you see it all over the bestsellers. Um, D'Angelo's uh, White Fragility and this idiotic book by uh, Ibram Kendi called um, How to Be an Anti-Racist. How to be an anti-racist. If you read the book, be a Democrat. That's how you be an anti-racist. Yeah. Agree with everything that we say, or you're a racist. That's actually the thesis of the book, the mm -hmm. argument. These people are totalitarians. They want to shut down, destroy anybody who opposes them. And they will do it mm -hmm. if there's no fight. I think conservatives who aren't against critical race theory don't understand critical race theory. As you suggest, it's not just sensitivity training like Joe Biden it's wants you to believe. Very simple, white, white skin privilege. Why every white is a racist because of the color of their skin. Now, how racist is that as an idea? Very, very to racist. Begin, to begin with. And we see a lot of skin privilege. If you're black, you can get into Harvard with 200 SAT points lower than if you're Asian or white. Or white. You, you go front of the line for firemen jobs, police jobs, any job. Um, and if you're a criminal and resisting arrest, you have this mass movement which will get you settlement, million to multi-million dollar settlements. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. It, it, it's it's almost like the people who control the system yeah, have the list of the greatest race hoax, the greatest hoax actually, but it's a race hoax in the history of the country. George Floyd killed himself. Mm -hmm. uh, the autopsy and toxicology reports show that. You can't uh, suffocate a, a man by putting your knee on the side of his neck. Is a blood vessel there? This is the windpipe. That's how you do it. Yeah. The autopsy showed that there was no um, life-threatening damage to his windpipe and mm -hmm. that he had four times the lethal dose of fentanyl in his system. He was yeah. dying when they arrested him. Yeah, I, I've written about that ad nauseum. I'm 100% with you there. So what well, you That's true of almost every one of the Black Lives Matter martyrs. Mm -hmm. This Breonna Taylor, she was an accomplice to a... a notorious drug dealer who had been her boyfriend. She, she rented a car for him and a, a dead body wound up in the car. In the car and she, he said, that wasn't enough to warn her off. She used her house as his mailing address. So uh, there were five houses that they uh, had warrants to search that night, uh, mm -hmm. which were part of his distribution system and hers was one of them, uh, you know, and if her boyfriend at the time hadn't fired on the police and wounded one of them, she'd be alive. So she got herself killed. Yeah. And, you know, as it, people, uh, matters of the heart are, are pretty troublesome. People often get themselves in a lot of trouble by uh, falling in love with the wrong people. So, you know, we can have a lot of sympathy for her, but we can't have any for the people who are saying she was murdered in her sleep, which is a monstrous lie, uh, promoted by people like Oprah Winfrey and LeBron James. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is a disgraceful moment in American history. So when we have these important figures- you, you People in Minnesota have a responsibility because you're at the center of it. Yeah, absolutely. You gotta fight, you gotta get people to fight. You just have to, you know, Minnesota schools are a nightmare, especially in Edina. Oh, yeah, for All sure. White skin privilege, racism. You have racist schools. Get your kids out of them. Yeah, 
I'm with fight you. Them to control the school boards and change it. And Trump was trying to do that, and he got waylaid by Chris Wallace, who turns out to be worse than his father. Yeah. So when you have these important people like Winfrey, LeBron James, Chris Wallace, all reinforcing this lie that everybody seems to believe. Because oh, nobody will say boo to a black person these days. This yeah, but with everybody. America is so beyond racism. Look, there wasn't one public figure in the entire country, not one police union, who said that what the, what the cops did to George Floyd was okay, although it probably was. It was a horrific video. Everybody reacted. Um, so where's the racism? Where the, the only racism is bending over backwards to uh, sympathize with black criminals whose main targets are other blacks. Black Lives Matter has gotten more blacks killed this year than uh, you know all the policemen in the country put together. Mm -hmm. all right, but, but the way I'm talking, you don't hear conservatives talk. No, everybody knows it. I know that everybody listening to me, you know, understands that this is the truth. Mm -hmm. But time, time to say it. Okay. When we live in a society where we can't speak the truth and all these figures are promoting such a consistent lie, how optimistic are you that we'll ever be able to break through the noise and sort of recenter the American? Well, I've, it's a matter of time. Um, right now, you know, your reputation gets shredded. You may lose your job. I mean, I'm not encouraging people to lose their jobs. Right. You have to find a way to say this, but um, they're going to outlaw mm -hmm. opinions that disagree with theirs. They're already trying it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to punish people. They're already punishing people who, are, who have adverse opinions when they get uh, when they get in control of the uh, machinery of the state. They will outlaw it and they'll put you in jail. What, what options happened have with the Soviet right? Union? That's exactly what happened. The yeah. Russians took power and tried to change human nature and killed everybody who was in their way or put them in the concentration camps. Mm -hmm. Is that possible in the United States? Absolutely. What options do we have left to resist if the conservatives are sometimes too afraid to speak out and the liberals are so tyrannical? Well, conservatives are afraid to speak out. It's all over. Yeah. It's yeah. in our hands, people. There's a lot of Americans out there who agree with you. Mm -hmm. Six think... million people voted for Trump. That's a formidable force, but people have to be willing to fight. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. When it comes to this topic of, of, of fighting and resisting this this leftist force we have to identify our enemy and i know this is something that you know your institution is really big on is identifying the enemy and discovering how to fight him right now who would you say our enemy is it's so broad the party is an anti-american party they spent four years sabotaging a duly elected commander-in-chief mm -hmm. sabotaging america that's what they did they they wanted people to die uh, they wanted to shut down the economy. Uh, they'd given aid and comfort to our enemies, all our enemies. China, the Chinese communists are supporting Biden. The Iranian Nazis are supporting Biden. Mm -hmm. Richard Spencer, the head of the handful of white supremacists that exist in this country, is supporting Biden. Mm -hmm. I mean, it couldn't be clearer, could it? It's just that Republicans aren't saying this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm saying this on a, you know, a little Zoom meeting. Yeah, <laughs> our Zoom meeting and the people that watch it who surely agree with us. So how would you say we, we resist this machinery? Is it an individual fight that people take on on sort of the interpersonal level? Or is this something we need to have facilitated? Yeah, fight at every level within mm -hmm. your comfort zone. Oh, you have to really push your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think people should do things that they, that they can't handle. Mm -hmm. But, you know, our younger generation is much better, much, much, much more aggressive, much more willing. Um, and it's because they've been up against the extreme version of the left in the, in the schools. Mm -hmm. Our K-12 K schools are gone now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the universities have been gone for 40 years. Uh, it's just terrible. A lot of people think- You just have to find a way to fight. There's all different ways. 
Hmm. You have to inform yourself. There's a lot of information now because of the internet. And so long, <laughs> and that may disappear too. Yeah. Um, it's the Democrats who are pushing the tech companies to censor conservatives. Uh, but right now you have access to everything that you need for this battle. You just have to go to the websites that, um, that report it. We have uh, created a website called discoverthenetworks.org, which you can get through if you go to frontpagemagazine.com. You can get it or get it directly at discoverthenetworks.org. It's an encyclopedia of the left. Um, it's odd that, I, that my operation was left to do this. My heritage has a hundred, I don't know what it is, but it's well over a hundred million dollar a year budget. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't do it because they were afraid of being called McCarthyites. Mm -hmm. The Democrat party is McCarthyism on steroids. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So uh, where do you place Trump's odds right now? I know we discussed this a little bit at the beginning of the interview. I don't, I don't know, I, I don't trust any of the polls. Um, sure. But that doesn't mean that, you know, all these lies haven't had an effect. Mm -hmm. uh, when you accuse somebody, they've accused Trump of killing 200,000 people. Let's remember that Obama and Biden let 60 million people get infected with the swine flu. And then they just stopped testing. So it was, it was more. I mean, that, that's who the Democrats are. Yeah. Let's remember that it was Andrew Cuomo who actually murdered 11,000 elderly people by forcing COVID patients into nursing homes. Mm -hmm. Um, do you sense that the have to, you have to have a, a clear eyed view of who your opponents are? Let's mm -hmm. remember that these people control every inner city in America of any size. All those injustices that they whine about but do nothing about, they're 100% responsible for. Mm -hmm. Do you sense that people are starting to see through that lie a little bit and see through the smoke, or do you think people more? You know, I've I've been at this a long time. I'm as you um, probably know, I was raised by communists. I was a leader of the New Left in the '60s. Um, when I came over to the conservative side after the Black Panthers murdered my friend, um, was in the uh, mid '70s. Mm -hmm. uh, I came into the right, and here everybody in the right was. And they're still calling these people liberals. They're vindictive bigots. Everybody knows that. They're bigots. This Pete Buttigieg is just a raving bigot. He attacks uh, Pence for being a religious Christian. That's why he attacks him. Mm -hmm. I mean, Only the left can get away with that kind of thing. A way too decent fellow, Mike Pence. I'm a little nervous about the debate on Wednesday because of that way too decent, uh, who, who welcomed Buttigieg and his husband uh, mm -hmm. and got paid back for it by being called a racist by this little snake. Uh, I forgot how I got, it. oh, for 30 years, I spent 30 years once I became a conservative, uh, feeling like a voice crying in the wilderness while other conservatives called bigots and, and people who wanted to destroy them, liberals. The only liberals in America are Republicans mm -hmm. or libertarians. Those are liberals. They actually believe in two sides to a... Just look at the channels. The only channel that has two sides is Fox. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And it, it seems like the left has all of these exclusive mouthpieces and the best at conservatives... Yeah. It's like the Soviet Communist Party running MSNBC and CNN. It's mm -hmm. the same mentality. Mm -hmm. So tell me, I I'm very interested in your story about how you came over from being a leftist to being a conservative. Uh, it seems the like- it I believed our own propaganda. I thought that the Black Panthers, which were a criminal street gang that murdered people, committed arson and other violent crimes, mm -hmm. uh, that they were persecuted because they were militant uh, blacks, black liberationists, and that the uh, our governments were racist, which wasn't even true. That which wasn't true. That mm -hmm. um, 
And uh, so I raised a lot of money and bought a Baptist church in East Oakland, um, which had 35 classrooms and turned it, I called it the Oakland Community Learning Center. And they made it their base of operations. And I foolishly thought that it, I had created a uh, tax exempt foundation to run it. And I foolishly thought that um, if they didn't keep their books correctly, the racist government would shut them down. The opposite is the truth. Mm -hmm. Al Sharpton and Jesse Jackson would be in jail if they were white for the way they run their 501c3s. Yes. Um, if you're a, a black leftist, you're protected. Uh, but anyway, I so I, I recruited, I was editing the largest magazine of the left at the time, Ramparts. Uh, and I recruited my bookkeeper to do the books of the school. Mm -hmm. uh, and in December, is that, it was December 17th, 1974, she disappeared. She left the bar with two black people and was never seen again. Um, and by the time the police got through interviewing me, um, uh, I, I realized that the Panthers had killed her. I may explain how difficult it is to, I wrote about all this, by the way, in my autobiography, Radical Son, mm -hmm. uh, how difficult it is for a, to hide a, a body. But if you have an organization, it's not so difficult. Uh, and, uh, you know, her body surfaced in February uh, 13th. 1975, uh, where her head had been bashed in. And um, she was the mother of three children, Betty. And uh, her, her daughter, the whole family was so hoodwinked by the Panthers that I told her daughter, I think the Panthers murdered your mother. And she said, oh no, they're good people. No, they're not. Just like Black Lives Matter, they're evil, evil people. Um, and then two months later, the left was successful in driving America out of Vietnam. The, com the communists proceeded to slaughter two and a half million Indo-Chinese peasants. And there wasn't a single protest. Mm -hmm. So there never was an anti-war movement that cared about the Vietnamese. They didn't care about the Vietnamese. They cared about destroying America. That's what the left is about, destruction of America. And they're making great headway. All of our philanthropic, not all of them, but the majority of our philanthropic foundations are run by America hating leftists. I know that sounds extreme, but they're financing Black Lives Matter for crying out tears. Mm -hmm. The New York Times is responsible for the 1619 Project, which makes our origins slavery instead of freedom. Mm -hmm. And it's a lie anyway. In 1619, uh, the Blacks who were brought to the Virginia colony weren't even slaves, which was illegal in the Virginia colony, which was in America. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when you have the New York Times putting out the propaganda worthy of the Iranian Nazis, well, we're in trouble. Yeah. And all our universities are doing the same. That's the curriculum in our schools. White people bad, America bad, mm -hmm. communists good. Mm -hmm. It seems like the the rate of this deterioration and the rate of the violence has increased dramatically in the last year, the last year and a half. Do you think that it actually has, or that we're just seeing it more and we're just paying more attention to it? No, it actually has. It has. Well, they, they they when the thug Michael Brown, the strong armed robber, uh, of <laughs> of hands up, don't shoot fame, invented by his accomplice in the strong arm robbery and refuted by six black eyewitnesses to the grand jury. Um, black lives, that's where Black Lives Matter really got going. And they tore up Ferguson, Missouri for a month, destroyed all these black neighborhoods, stores. That was the dry run for these big riots. But this is unprecedented. This didn't, you know, the 60s, there were a lot of terrorist acts uh, committed by people like Bill Ayers, who was Barack Obama's mentor. Um, there were a lot of bombings, but there were no, I, I don't recall any riots that destroyed cities. 
like like the ones you saw in, in Minneapolis. At yeah. the place. Absolutely. So and it's because at the time the Democrat Party was a, an American party. Mm -hmm. um, and they did control the cities, but they wouldn't put up with violence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. On what do you blame this new tolerance for violence? Because it seems like in the past, you know, even people that disagree I, wouldn't be burning. I, I think it, it's what I call cultural Marxism. Sure. What the left has done is it's appropriated this uh, crackpot theory of Karl Marx that society is organized into a hierarchy of oppressors and oppressed. Mm -hmm. Marx thought the oppressors were capitalists. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just thinking of Lenin's phrase that the cat, you can count on the capitalists to sell you the rope that will hang them, some oppressor class. <laughs> but um, that there's the oppressed and the oppressor. And now the oppressor is white, male, Christian, or or, or a Jew that cares about Israel. Um, that's who the oppressors are. And the oppressed is uh, everybody of color, including all the criminals and, and all the uh, cannibals like Idi Amin. Yeah. So you, you, you identify that the left has used this idea of hierarchy to justify violence against people that they think are above them. Is there a good hierarchy? Is there a positive use for hierarchy in a conservative society? One that is ordered? The meritocracy. What makes America great is that you, you get or used to get judged on your merits. Mm -hmm. Actually, it was a fairly brief period, but the Civil Rights Acts by the way, anybody who uses phrases like white supremacy, systemic racism, they're fascists. Mm -hmm. um, white supremacy is ridiculous. Um, cons considering when white supremacists like Biden supporting Richard Spencer hold rallies in Charlottesville, um, they get, whether they get 20 or 30 people to show up, and then there's 5,000 anti white supremacists. So it's a ridiculous, um, a really a ridiculous charge. And I forgot, I forgot what my, um, what I was speaking to there. It's, uh, oh, so the hierarchy. Yeah, yeah. From the Civil Rights Acts to now, there cannot, it's systemic racism is illegal. Institutional racism is illegal. There are thousands of black prosecutors, police chiefs, um, you know, attorneys general, lawyers, there are no suits about institutional racism. It doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. Yet conservatives let these Democrats lie through their teeth all the time without being challenged on this. Do you expect that we'll ever see- Hierarchy that's based on merit is a good one. Yeah, yeah. That's what, that's what freedom is about. The minute you're appointing people, the minute you're, you're, you're legislating equality, like giving millions upon mil hundreds of millions of dollars to Black Lives Matter, it doesn't go to Black people, it just goes to their uh, political power organization. Um, but, you know, trillions have been spent trying to lift people out of poverty in this country. It hasn't lifted, it hasn't changed the poverty rate one iota because the problem is the people. Mm -hmm. Problem is, of course, the lack of fathers is the biggest problem among black inner city people. That's the big, a big, a big problem. In Hispanic communities, it's having children too young. I mean, there's, there's all reasons for it, mm -hmm. but none of them can be attributed to racism. None of them. Mm -hmm. Do you ever think that we're gonna see- uh... So many programs bending over backwards to help black people, which is not a bad thing. But it is a bad thing when it doesn't require of the people it's supposed to be helping of anything. Mm -hmm. You just get money. That's, yeah. not, that's not how you wouldn't do that to your kids. Just no. throw money at them. Say, oh, here, whatever you want. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the, look, here's the division between left and right. It's basically about human nature. Mm -hmm. Leftists think that the problem is patriarchy is races, oppressing, mm -hmm. oppressive classes and case. 
baloney. The problem, I mean, that's been tried. That's what communism was about, getting rid of the ruling class. So why they, they replaced it with a political ruling class, big deal. Mm -hmm created more poverty than had ever been seen in anywhere in the, in the well, human history, the Russians did. Um, conservatives uh, are, are biblical. Mm -hmm. Sin is not against human nature to sin. That, that's part of human nature. Yeah. Once you understand that, that human beings are a problem, uh, you know, you, you understand that we need morality, we need religion, we need laws, because people, what happens when people, and it's, you know, it's as old as the hills, when you leave people to their own devices, you get Lord of the Flies, for those of you who are literary, mm -hmm. or saw the movie, um, and you get uh, Seattle, yeah, autonomous zones. It immediately degenerates into the rule of the strongest and the most armed and the most ruthless. Yeah, it's not good. Uh, you know, I'm a Christian myself. A lot of other conservatives are. But do you think it's even possible to have American conservatism without religion? Yeah, I'm not religious. Interesting. I'm, I'm in a religious bent, but I'm, I'm, I'm right. not an observant Jew. Um, I, I believe that there's no more profound view of what has befallen us than Genesis. Hmm. So you think you place to use like biblical concepts and lessons and apply them even to say- I think religion is good because I don't think most people can, look, it's about a consolation for a losing proposition, which is life. And, uh, you know, I'm an agnostic, so I, I don't, I'd be just as surprised if there was an afterlife as if there isn't. Hmm. But most people can't live that way. Hmm. I, I, I mean, I don't know why I, I'm able. Um, well, I was raised in a, a communist household. <laughs> so uh, I never had that to lean on. And I, you know, I, I can see it's a wonderful consolation. And, and it, it, in so far as it's not abused the way, you know, there are a lot of leftist evangelicals and yeah. Catholics, the Jesuits have been a problem since the 16th century. And the Pope is a big problem. Um, so there, there are bad uh, Catholics who don't understand, uh, are not disciples of St. Augustine, let's shall, shall we say. Um, and, you know, religion is, you know, my late friend, misguided friend, Christopher Hitchens wrote a book uh, called God is Not Great, How Religion Poisons Everything. It's actually people who poison religion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I definitely agree with that. The biggest problem we have is with human nature. It's ornery. Mm -hmm. Let's see, you can have, I got a proposition better for you than the Green New Deal. You can live in paradise. The fruit will drop from the trees. You'll live forever. There won't be any pain in childbirth. But I ask you, one, there's one thing to stay here that you have to do, and that is not want to commit evil. Yeah. And that's the one thing they want. It's like being on a diet. Yeah, if, if, if the diet is no carrots, it's the one food that you want. <laughs> yep, human nature. You're exactly right about that. Uh, one thing we always like to do on the show is answer audience questions. Uh, yeah. We just have a guy named John write in. Asking, uh, I talk too much. <laughs> no problem, no problem. Uh, we had a guy named John. He wrote in, he asked, how do I most effectively speak out? How do I change things? I think he's you know, talking to a very important point, but a lot of people feel powerless nowadays. Oh, uh, no, I don't know your, um, you know, what your situation is in life. But look, start with, you know, if you have a family, you got kids in school, mm -hmm. or you have kids who are going to go to school, find out what they're teaching, uh, complain about it, organize uh, for a school board election. Mm -hmm. Fight. Fight at every level. Yeah. I mean, the left has been doing that forever. They've got teachers. They've got prosecutors. They infiltrate everything. No kidding. They've got whole libraries of communist children's books. Yeah, exactly. And we have nothing. Now, when I was a leftist. That's the first thing we thought of in this. Really? Yeah, we were going to make uh, these radical children's books. Hmm. Hmm. 
You know, it's interesting. I, I, I've seen a lot of lectures by people that used to be involved in communism and sort of explain the plan that communists were trying to implement. How successful do you think 1960s communists were in accomplishing the objectives that they had set? Well, the 60s, look, they infiltrated the mainstream culture. They mm -hmm. were still more or less marginalized, but they did. They caused us to quit the Vietnam War and let those two and a half million peasants be slaughtered. Mm -hmm. um, it's very, very successful. And they captured the popular culture. Conservatives, the conservative reaction is to retreat. Schools yeah. being taken over will homeschool. Um, communist propaganda and anti-family propaganda is put out on, and anti-religious propaganda is put out on the, uh, by Hollywood, we won't go to the movies. But, you know, that's begun to change some. We have people in Hollywood actually fighting now. I think that's one of the most important things conservatives can do is learn how to fight. Because for too long, like you say, we've been seeding ground and just trying to slow the pace. Making films is cheap these days because of the technology. Yeah. Um, yeah, conservatives just have to get creative and fight. Absolutely. We're kind of coming down to the end of our time here, but I've got to ask, what's that, what's that painting behind you? Is there any story there? That's a Penley painting of me. It was given to me on my, I can't remember which birthday, maybe my 75th. Hmm. I like it. I like it. It's a good background piece. It is a very good painter. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we've covered a lot of ground today. Uh, We've covered sort of the effect that Trump has had on conservatism, the problems that we see with the upcoming election, the necessity for conservatives to fight. Is there anything you want to leave us with before you wrap? No, I mean, that's the big thing. Find a way that doesn't uh, uh, inflict too much discomfort on you. I mean, you don't want to create monstrous problems for yourself. Do mm -hmm. what you're capable of uh, and at, at whatever level. I mean, but you have to familiarize yourself with the, with the facts, um, mm -hmm. all the statistics, and there have been plenty of articles on it show um, that white people are more likely to be shot unarmed white people by cops than black people. And that the figures are minuscule, 10 million arrests, mm -hmm. 2018, for example, 19 white unarmed whites killed by police nine unarmed blacks. It's all based on lies. But all these statistics and figures, uh, Heather McDonald has done wonderful work uh, Absolutely. at the Manhattan Institute, but it, it's all over the web. It e and the web makes it very easy to find these out. You just, yeah. and blacks killed by pol police, whites killed, <laughs> you mm -hmm. just put it in and you, and you get it up. Uh, and my website has a lot of this, my websites, I should say has a lot of this information. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, we thank and, you. You know, if you want a, a, a clue as to the tone and whatnot, go to frontpagemagazine.com and just look at the headlines of the articles and see what, so, you know, read the articles too, but, mm -hmm. but you get a sense of, of how to elevate, um, how to elevate the fight. Um, yeah. I, by the way, uh, since there are probably religious people watching this, I wrote a, another book just before I wrote Blitz called Dark Agenda, The War to Destroy Christian America. There's a lot about the left in there and why they hate Christianity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's very important that you arm yourself with these facts. You read the books, you learn the real statistics, you go to the websites. And I really like that point you made about how our viewers shouldn't expose themselves to undue risk. Because if you get doxxed and you lose your job or your, your family disowns you for something you said, you're not going to be an asset to the conservative. Well, I'm, I'm concerned with the, the knee-jerk reactions that conservatives have, which is to be polite, which is very yeah. civilized. I yeah. feel guilty about that. I, I feel I sometimes was sent as a former radical to teach conservatives bad manners. But when you're in a street fight, I mean, look at, uh -huh. just look at what the Democrats are accusing Trump of killing every corona patient. They're accusing Trump of burning the cities. Uh, there's no lie too big for them to tell to destroy Trump. So we don't want to be like them, but we, we, you've got to find ways to neutralize them. And one of them, I think one of the most effective is to point out that they have 100% control of the inner cities that 
are important in America and have for 50 to 100 years. Mm -hmm. Everything that's, every injustice in Minnesota that's done to black people, there's some Democrat overseeing it. Yep, uh, and there's not a lot of Republicans in Minneapolis, period. His name these days is that racist Keith Ellison. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, Keith Ellison, don't even get me started. There's a whole litany of problems with Ellison. Yeah, he's depressed. Yeah. He charged the uh, Minneapolis police with crimes before the autopsy reports came in, before there was an investigation. He suppressed the videos that showed that they weren't racist at all. Mm -hmm. He's responsible. You, you want to know who's responsible for the destruction of uh, Minneapolis? It's Keith Ellison. Absolutely. And, and his Democrat supporters. Absolutely. Yeah, it's very important that we fight these Democrats. We resist them at every level. You learn the facts, you equip yourself to do battle, and you don't be shy about it. I think that's your, probably your most important message is stop being so coy and polite in these sorts of uh, battles that we're in. I actually, I wrote a book called Take No Prisoners, which is yeah. about my political strategy. And uh, it's weird. In the state I'm in, there's a, a Republican running for re-election. And he did a Zoom interview, and that book was on his shelf. It's very hard to see. Yeah. Left-wing Democrat McCarthyite circled that title and then got every smear of me off the, off the web from such hate sites as the Southern Poverty Law Center and attacked not only him using, using the smear of me, mm -hmm. But every, um, like I, I had, I, I had spoken at a Christian university, so they attacked a Christian university. Everybody who had contact with me. Yeah, yeah. They, I mean, these are fascists, and uh, you have to understand that about these nice Democrat people. My parents were very nice people, mm -hmm. right? unless you got into a political fight with them. Yeah. They weren't so nice. Yeah, I mean, the, the communists that have staged revolutions around the world are very nice people until they're killing the capitalists. It's something yeah. that we have to keep in mind. Absolutely. Well, we thank you very much for being with you. Uh, we really are... I would thank you, everybody who's out there that I can't see. Yeah, we absolutely appreciate your message. It's a daunting message, but it's one that we need to hear in these troubled times. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. Absolutely. The stream will be back at 630 with Will Witt from Prager University. So tune in then, and thanks for being with us now.